Opium is one of the main ingredients of Strickland's medication. Never a good move. knife. There's a name engraved on the metal. Clay. What kind of man puts his name on a knife? Good evening, Dr. Tippett. Dr. Reed, any good news to share? Do you need any medical assistance yourself, Doctor? Yes, indeed. But don't worry, I am perfectly capable of taking care of myself. I will see you later. Goodbye, Dr. Tippetts. Good evening, Nurse Brannigan. Good evening, Doctor. Do you require medical assistance, Nurse? I will be fine. Nurse, you won't be able to help people if... I'll try, Dr. Reed. Thank you. Goodbye, nurse. Call me if you need assistance. Good evening, Milton. Good evening, Doctor. Still trying to save lives. Do you need any medical... I'm afraid I do. Our job brings us into contact with all kinds of infections, Milton. That's easy for you to say, Doctor. Goodbye, Milton.
Good evening, Nurse Hawkins. Good evening, Dr. Reed. Do you need medical help yourself, Nurse? I'm afraid I've contracted some illness, Dr. Reed. Not under my watch, Nurse. Thank you, Dr. Reed. Goodbye, Nurse Hawkins. I'm quite busy right now, Dr. Reed. Do you need my assistance? Don't be ridiculous. I'm ca- Then you are lucky- I wish this hospital could have received as much attention from you, Dr. Reed. Thank you for your time. Good evening, Mr. Goswick. How are you? I'm okay. Do you need any help? I'm afraid I may, sir. You are not a burden, sir. And you have my gratitude for that. I have to go now, sir. I'm all right. Don't waste your time with me. Good evening, Doctor. Do you require medical attention as well, Mrs. Goswick? Do you know you're the only one who's asked me this? Despite what you think about this place... Well, at least your reputation seems well deserved. Goodbye, Mrs. Goswick. Good evening, sir. Good evening, Dr. Reed. Do you need medical attention? Well, the proximity of the dead is not the most healthy company. Don't take too many risks. And that is a good thing. Goodbye, Mr. Chidana. It's locked. Good evening, Dr. Strickland. And good evening to you, Dr. Reed. Can I be of any help? I located the shop, but it was vandalized, and the owner is missing. All I found was your order. I was afraid of such bad news. People are so desperate they're ready to burgle a shop for drugs. That's quite a list you ordered. Opium, sodium hypochlorite. It can't be just headaches you're trying to cure. This dreadful influenza, of course. I already ran some tests on hopeless cases. Without success, I must admit. Do you realize you could create a lethal poison without the correct dosage? Then there are the legal ramifications. Is this not true of any medical substance, Dr. Reed? However, if you would agree to improve it, I'd be glad to accept your help. As long as you promise to be scrupulous with your experiments, I may try to gather these substances and even help improve upon the mixture. That's all I'm asking for, Dr. Reed. That's all I'm asking. I want to know about these secret tests you run, and if they can save people from this epidemic. Speak to me now, Thoreau. I know I may sound presumptuous, but I'm just following your steps, Dr. Reed. I'm casting away the shadows of ignorance by daring to face them. Self-confidence is essential in our line of work, my young colleague, but only if tempered with the correct amount of cynicism. But you never doubt yourself, Dr. Reed. I've read all your articles and books. You performed the most daring research during the war. You have my support, Dr. Strickland. I know exactly what it feels like to battle an unknown disease with only your mind and force of will to help you. Thank you, Dr. Reed. You don't know what that means to me. Goodbye, Dr. Strickland. I can't let Strickland put his patients at risk with opium. Perhaps 
An adjusted formula will deliver more of a placebo effect. Good evening, Dr. Reed. Please show me what you have to sell. Of course. It's just drink. It's locked. Good evening, Nurse Hawk. Good evening, Doctor. Pepper, are you sure you want to leave this hospital? To become a nurse was a little girl's dream. But in the end, I don't feel that useful. I want more. I want to make things change. But you're doing something important here. For all the patients who need your help. We save lives, sure. Each time we send a cured patient home, it's a relief beyond words. But since the epidemic, I feel so powerless. What steps are you prepared to take to feel more useful? I don't know yet. My sister believes that the real fight is in the streets nowadays. Maybe she's right. Maybe this is what I must do. And what about Milton Hooks? Does he share your point of view? For Milton, any change means more comfort and more peace. I disagree. If you feel that saving lives is not useful enough, perhaps it means that you've lost faith. On the contrary, my faith has never been stronger. Maybe we are all just too proud to face up to the fact that science cannot compete with God. Goodbye, Nurse Hawkins. It's locked, all right. What news, Jonathan? I've heard you've now joined the vampire elite of London. Did Elizabeth tell you? So it's Elizabeth now. My, my. Things are moving quickly. I turn my back for a moment and away you go. How's the situation at the Pembroke? We're still holding out. The question is, for how long? The docks have fallen. The epidemic is spreading fast. Have you seen Lady Ashbury recently? Yes, she popped in yesterday. Told me about your new friends in the West End. Just a courtesy visit, then? Yes. And no. She was en route to the docks, I think. Following a lead concerning your maker. I may have found the source of the contagion. Doris Fletcher, the actress. Thankfully, in the end, she was destroyed by fire. Really? Oh, please, do tell me more. Doris was a heavily mutated skull. Almost a new breed entirely. It's as if the disease had completely altered her mind and body. Highly contagious. As if the disease had taken control of her will? Yes. Once a beautiful and brilliant woman, she became motivated by hate alone. Oh, she was a beauty. I met her when she visited the hospital to cheer up the sick. Too bad the fire destroyed her. 
but it was probably for the best. Have you heard of similar cases? No, I don't think so. Except, perhaps, it reminds me of an old report from the Brotherhood. Well, more an article, really. What was it about? The author, a friar, referred to a rare form of contagion in a skull he observed during the Black Death. The carrier was always female. They called them icors. I'll come back later. Thank you, Edgar. Always a pleasure to see you, my friend. It's locked, all right. The flower's dying. It needs water. Strickland's project could be dangerous. I have a mind to report him to Dr. Ackroyd. It's locked. Good evening, Mr. Goswick. How are you? I'm okay. I have to go now, sir. Good evening, sir. Good evening, Dr. Strickland. And good evening. I have managed to improve the mixture by diluting it. Have you ever heard of Sir Joseph Francis Olive or the placebo effect? No, I don't think so. Why? A placebo is a substance or procedure that has no actual physical effect. You made a placebo of my project. Why? Research has established that a placebo, as long as the subject believes in the effect, can provoke a positive physiological reaction. Really? That's fascinating. And you want me to, what, administer the placebo and see what occurs? Something like that, yes. Well, I'm a bit surprised, but I trust you, Dr. Reed. Please take the key to my cabinet and put this placebo there for future use. Goodbye, Dr. Strickland. As for me, what a blundering idiot. Good evening, sir. So many deaths. A lot of my family. It's locked. I cannot enter.
It's locked, all right. It's locked. At least Strickland can't kill anyone with this formula. How can I be sure I'll not find your unconscious body in the house again? I promise you, you'll not find my unconscious body. For God's sake, how can you say such a thing? How can you refuse to listen? I tried to warn you for so long. No, I won't let my only son die. You promised me you'll stay alive. Your son lied to you, like the whole world lies to us. Good evening, Mr. Goswick. I'm okay. Admit it, Mortimer. Your mother had you hospitalized here because you tried to kill yourself. Yes, it's true. All right, then. This is the first time we've really shared information about your case. Shall we call this progress? Call it what you want, Dr. Reed. You can trust me. I won't report you to the authorities. My one and only concern is your health. I guess I should thank you, then. Can I help you in any way, Mr. Goswick? I wrote a letter for my mother. She was supposed to read it after... after my death. But... I suppose she doesn't have to read it now. I see. And is this letter still near the place where you tried to take your own life? Yes. And I don't want anyone reading my last words. I mean, I'm still here. If you bring me back that letter, then perhaps we'll talk. I have to go now, sir. Good evening, sir. Doctor. We may lack the resources, but we have some of the most brilliant minds in London. Okay. 